Hey folks, welcome back to our Elenco AMFM radio kit build. Um, today we're going to try and get through sections 8 and 9. That's the goal anyway, as section 9 is extended. Um, so I don't know if we're going to get all the way through it, but it would be great to wrap this up and uh, get uh, a working radio. But that's the goal, um, and we'll see how far we get. So. It wasn't anything too unusual last time. Um, we may come back and revisit some points at some point in the future, but uh, since we've got a long way to go and a limited time to get there, let's get started. As usual, we'll, we'll speed through the build process and I'll stop if there's anything really interesting and discuss it. Okay, so that's the first FMIF amplifier section completed, uh, section eight here. So we're ready to do the test now. There is a there's a couple of things I'd like to mention. I, I wish Elenco would do. Uh, number one is is the components here. I think the components should be in the order they're asking you to put them in, rather than in order of size. So they should start off with the very first resistor you put in, and up end up with the last resistor you put in. And another thing they could do is for any particular section, rather than going around in a little circle like this, it'd be much better if they went with the lower components first. So like the resistors first, then the little capacitors, and the transistors, then the transformers. The reason for that is sometimes they'll ask you to put in components and then it's, you know, like this, this resistor here is much harder to put in when it's between these two transformers than if you had just the one transformer in the way. So that, that would improve the kit building as well. Anyway, so let's get on with the uh, static tests. Okay, we're going to check the uh, bias on Q4 for this static test. And it should be approximately 1.4 volts. It's all set up to go. We're going to turn it on. Test point 15 and Q4. We got 1.45 volts. On to the next one. Okay, so we're set up here now to do the dynamic measurements. We're going to do the AC gain and the bandwidth of this uh, particular section, IF amplifier number one. Now I've, I've got a new probe here. So I've been using a, a, an eight picofarad probe, but I now have a, a new FET input two picofarad probe. So we shouldn't be loading down the circuit in any way, shape or form. And we have everything set up as they requested. So I've got the I've got the signal generator set up at uh, 10.7 megahertz. Yeah, I've got two millivolts peak to peak, which is the lowest I can go. And I have my scope is set up to 20 millivolts. And I've got the time base set to pick up the 10 megahertz. So that should be okay. Now we're all set. So the one is to turn it on, turn it up until we get 60 millivolts peak to peak. And uh, with a lime tool screwdriver, just T2 for a peak and reduce the generator input to maintain three divisions. That's the normal way they do the gain. So let's do that. Uh, let's turn it on. And let's start turning it up till we get 60 millivolts peak to peak. So let's leave it there. And we'll start tuning. Yeah, that's uh, definitely affecting things. So we reduce the input to get 60 millivolts. Okay, we're now down to 3.1 here, giving us a gain up around about uh, 18 point something or other. So our gain is uh, greater than 18. And uh, we'll do frequency again. Let's go up around about 0.41 there. So that is 10,900, or I mean 10.9 megahertz. 
and we'll go the other way. Forty one there at uh, ten point five three. So that gives us uh, 470. It's a little bit better. On to section nine. Okay, we'll start the build and meet you back at the end. measure the bias on Q3 and it should be 1.8 volts we got 1.9 that's close enough yeah let's set up for the dynamic measurements Okay, so we've got our test equipment set up as described in uh, figure 48. Set our generator to 10.7 megahertz, no modulation, minimum voltage. Set the scope for 10 millivolts per division. Whoa, we're really getting to the noise floor here. Okay, turn the power on and slowly increase the amplitude of the generator until 40 millivolts peak to peak as seen on the scope. Four divisions or 40 millivolts. All right, so here we go. I think we're going to be we're going to be there anyway. Okay, here we are. With the alignment tool of the screwdriver, adjust T1 for P. Here we go. We scope probe to Q3, basic Q3, record the input voltage. Okay, so I can almost read that. Let me move it up a little bit. We take the noise into account. It looks like we've got about 11 millivolts, and that's what the the generator is saying, so I'm going to record 11 millivolts. So, gain show, so 11 in the gas. So we're we're right in range there. 40 goes, or 11 goes into 40, about 3.6 times. That's pretty good. Okay. Now I guess we're going to do bandwidth. So we go back over here to test point 12. 40 millivolts peak to peak. Since we didn't change anything, we should be roughly there. We're going to get 28 millivolts peak to peak on either side. So okay, let's increase the frequency. Till we're 2. I think we're there already. Yeah. Okay, so we're there. We're at 10.91. <clears throat> FH equals 10.91 and now we're going to go the other way or 10.51 so, so that's about 400 kilohertz that's ah, right in the middle of the range. That's good to see. Okay, good. All right, then to the FM oscillator. And we'll see you back at the end.
finish the uh, FM oscillator and we're going to check the bias on Q2. Got all hooked up here and we should get should be about four volts at the base of Q2 so let's check that. Three point seven. That's good enough. All right. On with the AFC. Okay, here we're going to test the test the automatic gain control or automatic frequency control. Um, connect your RF generator and bottom of the circuit is shown in figure 50. We have that. Uh, set your bomb to read 9 volts DC. Yeah, set your generator to 10.7 megahertz. No modulation and moderate signal strength output. What's that? <laughs> um, I think we were running a few millivolts into here before. We had about 11 millivolts going in, so I'm going to leave it at that. We got 11 millivolts going in now, um, and let's turn it on. Got 6.5 volts. Let's say it's called 6.6 .6 volts. 6.6. .6. Now. While watching a problem, slowly increase the frequency of your generator. As the frequency decreases, the voltage in D1 should increase. Okay, let's decrease the... And it does. Increase the frequency of the generator until the voltage is equal to VD1. There we go. So if we increase the voltage now, the voltage... Or increase the frequency, the voltage should decrease. And it doesn't, it increases. Hmm. Okay, let's increase the amplitude. See if that helps. Maybe 30 millivolts. There are 6.4 volts at 10.7 megahertz if we increase the volt increase the frequency the voltage goes up and if we decrease the frequency the voltage goes up okay well let me try and figure this out and I'll be right back okay folks I'm going to call it quits at this point and uh, come back to this next week because I still got quite a bit more to do and we've already got uh, 14 minutes on this one. So, well, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, if you like, hit like. If you want to see more, subscribe and uh, leave a comment down in the comment section. Much appreciated. Thank you very much and we'll see you next time around. Bye.